Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Mike. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Kelly, Kelly and Mike, Mike Show. Show. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Hey. Oh, it's going great. How are you doing? Pretty good. Um, just excited to continue our discussion from, from last time, getting right. a little more into DevOps. Super excited yeah. about that. Yeah. So, so what I really wanted to focus on this week, I've been thinking, you know, you saw our Kanban board last time, and that seems to me to be our first step into getting into Azure DevOps is working right, with our course. backlog, working with our process. So yep. We'd love to talk about that today. Yeah, so backlogs, that's a great story. And uh, I think you have one in DevOps, if you want to pull that up. Um, we can take a look at the backlog. I absolutely do. Yeah, so I can see your screen just fine. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. it. Absolutely, so we imported a whole bunch of work items. Um, we're yeah. trying to organize things um, and right make it so that they make sense for our process. And as I've been playing around here, I'm seeing what might be really useful in the hierarchies that we didn't necessarily yeah. have in our Kanban or that we had to represent with like different colored stickies. Um, I think that there's some great opportunity for, um, for organization here that I'd really kind of like to talk about. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. What are, your, uh, what are your organization structures like? What's that like? So we are following the Scrum template. Um, so out of the box, it seems that that one most fits our process in terms of the workflow. Like we're, we're trying gotcha. to be a Scrum team. Um, and, and that's yeah. what I hear most people talking about as I, I look around to see what common usages of this are. Um, so we're going to start with what comes in terms of work items and hierarchy and how those work. Um, and then maybe later we'll get into customizing that. Um, yeah. and how that might work better for our team. So we've got our epics at the highest level, um, which is like our big picture items that aren't necessarily gonna be delivered in one sprint, mm -hmm. or features that might cross a sprint, um, but are a little more targeted. And then our product backlog items is really what our sticky notes were before. Oh, so right, to me, right. that is the item that was on the board. This is what someone is going to be doing. And the yeah. cool thing here is we're breaking it down into tasks so that's even you know the little implementation details, um, so we can be tracking our time, and that I think is yeah. Has so this is kind of really cool. cool here is what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my favorite is the the Scrum process too. There are you know for everybody mm -hmm. like we mentioned last time, there are some other processes uh, like Agile, which just falls with the same vernacular that Agile processes uh, Agile process mm -hmm. uses, basically around you know the user stories um, and features mm -hmm. and epics. But they just kind of record things a little bit different. There's not a huge difference between the Scrum and Agile, as you know. And then there's obviously mm -hmm. a basic process, which just has three levels, a, um, uh, an epic, a, an issue, and then an, uh, a task. Really simple project management feature there. And then there's CMMI mm -hmm. also, which uh, uh, just is if you follow a CMMI process. So these are really mm -hmm. great. These are all out of the box as uh, as we're as we're demonstrating, but they are customizable, which we hope we can customize. We can demonstrate to you guys at another video. So let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see your board. Absolutely. So this is all of our work items that we have. So a whole bunch of stuff here, um, and poking around, there are lots of ways of looking at these. Obviously, there's this one view right. that's yep. just here's a dump. Um, it's like everything. everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's not super useful. Um, mm -mm. So what I found to be more helpful is backlogs that you see here. Um, that to me is a, a topic that makes sense. I'm always talking right. um, as a product owner about what a backlog might be. And I can see the different levels of that. If I want the big picture 10,000 foot view, I can look at just my epics that I have going on, yeah. um, and I can even you know drill down into each of those. Um, I can switch into my feature yeah. backlog. Um, just going through each of those uh, has proven to be very helpful. 
Yeah, so I noticed mm -hmm. one thing that you had on your backlog levels was all these items mm -hmm. and then separated by sprints, which I find super useful for my clients. But there's, there's a lot you have to do to set that part up. Um, before we mm -hmm. get into that, though, I mean, you have everything set up for, it looks like, uh, you know, three sprints, you know, three, four, five, and six, or I guess six sprints total. We've already passed the first two in your process. We're now in sprint mm -hmm. three. Is that right? And then we have all those backlog so, items mm -hmm. that are not not targeted in a sprint and probably aren't estimated. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so, yeah, when we're looking at that backlog, um, you know, I've been kind of forecasting to see where I think my team might be. So even if we don't have stuff necessarily um, targeted for a specific sprint or done in there, um, I can turn on uh, my forecasting. Let the pain go away. Yeah, that's super powerful. Yeah, but, so you, I can but you say, did. Uh... Okay, assuming that I know that I can do um, ten points worth of effort per sprint, but say you know somehow I'm gonna think I double my team's capacity. Um, and I think I can do 20, then it will show me, okay, here's based on your order, whatever your product owner has decided, yeah. we think you can get to this point by sprint five. Yeah, also kind of shows some pretty neat things, like you have that one item on your second one as sprint six, which means you guys mm -hmm. have decided you had more priority. Somebody said, oh, we're gonna make it sprint mm -hmm. six. But now, you know, you can easily see, well, we can, we're gonna do it in sprint three. Uh, so in, in mm -hmm. that case, what we'll do is go ahead and, and you can change that iteration on that. Mm -hmm. But the forecasting is great. I mean, forecasting is a whole other beast, right? And I think that's a good mm -hmm. idea. I hope that we can one day have a video on that as well. What do you think on mm -hmm. forecasting? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think that forecasting seems to be a bit of an art yeah. <laughs> rather than a science. But right? really even <laughs> just using the, the, the basics there kind of helps me say, you know, as a, as a product owner, as a scrum master, I can't make promises, but I can start to say, we're thinking that this is going to be the life of this product. Um, so cool. it helps me make a little bit more educated guess based on what we've done in the past. And that's just really useful. Um, yeah. But as we talk about planning, you know, just being able to, it's almost like picking up that sticky note and putting in a different bucket. If I say that I don't want to do this one, um, you know, in the sprint that it's currently in, I want to move it. Um, all yeah. I have to do is drag and drop things. Um, yeah. Hey, just as a note, okay, I don't yeah. want to target that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a note, um, the drag and drop functionality, though, I don't know if you're aware. I kind of got caught up with this one time, but the drag and drop functionality is not available for the stakeholder level. You actually have to have um, a higher level than stakeholder, like a basic license or a MSDN license in Azure DevOps for drag and drop capability. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, so yeah, the stakeholder license is one that's a, a free user. Um, yep. That's typically what you we have give business users. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's good to know that someone like your product owner or your scrum master needs to have a higher license. Yeah, level. absolutely. So it's good All to right. know. Hey, so um, this is great. So if we add new work mm -hmm. items, you got that little new work item button up the top, mm -hmm. but there are like three, four different ways to add items. We got that way, which we can simply mm -hmm. type it in, right? Um, but mm -hmm. isn't there, there's a couple other ways that I find, like if I have to do bulk update, there's one way. But if you have mm -hmm. that list of the hierarchy, what's really kind of cool on the backlog, on that hierarchy, what you can do is, is actually set, there's a little plus sign, and I love this. I mean, you just hit plus, and it'll add, add a new child element to that uh, on mm -hmm. the backlog. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, you I have that right next to it. at features, and I want to add a new... Um, product backlog item to it, I can just click right there. And yeah, add a new exactly. Backlog yep. item. Yeah, so, and it, it's yeah, great. Super it's useful. Easy. Super useful. But, you know, if you have a lot, what do, you, what do you do if you have a lot of items you want to add? And that's exactly what we did to start. We, we started looking at this and we're like, that's going to take me forever to click through and type in everything yep. that I have. Um, so, luckily, that's pretty common. Um, so, there is an integration that you can do with Excel. Uh, or really just with a, any sort of CSV. Excel is my, yep. I think, the easiest way to, to view that. Yep. Um, so you can have uh, your CSV in a certain format, um, and all you have to do is define some of the basics of what a work item is. Like here, I just you know did some dummy ones because I wanted to play with this. Um, yep. I have an epic a feature and a product backlog item, and you can have that hierarchy. Um, you know, just knowing what you're working here, I know that this feature is going to go underneath this because it's 
been indented a little bit. So I can take this CSV file. Um, yeah, but before you do, I mean, if you have that, uh -huh. right, with Title, yeah, Title One, Title Two, Title Three. If you wanted a task, mm -hmm. you'd add a new column called Title Four, and then put the title mm -hmm. of that task under Title Four. That gives you your hierarchy. And then, um, if you had work item type as task, then that item would be a child of the previous. So, if, what if I added a new backlog mm -hmm. item? How would I make sure it fell under that feature backlog creation? So I would want to go back to Title Three for that one. Okay. Um, so um, second work item, we can just call it that um, as part of that, um, and it will know just based on the one above it what I want to be working through there. Um, yeah. So it's all relative to the items before it in your list. That's from what great. I found. Yeah, and also you could mm -hmm. add a description uh, column that will allow mm -hmm. you to type in that free text area. So hey, mm -hmm. okay, let's see, let's show it. Let's show it what it does. All right. This is so great this stuff. Is in. Mm -hmm. So uh, inside your queries, which is a good place to just kind of um, mine through your work items, there's yep. just this import work items button. Um, and it'll say, I choose my file. Um, and when I click import, if I've done something wrong, it's going to tell me here because I've done it wrong many times. <laughs> um, and it'll right. tell you things <laughs> that it doesn't find. Um, so I can say import. And it even allows you to look at this before you're actually saving it. So oh, you can see cool. here that we've got one. Um, oh, I've said it's new, but that's not actually a, a, a valid state. So I've got to change that to to do. So you can even work with these until right now I could leave this page and all of that would be disposed of. Oh, cool. um, so it's yeah. until I actually click to save my items, that's when they'll get added. Um, so that kind of helps um, work through it before you might be ready to import everything there. Yeah. Um, another useful thing with this is you saw it just appeared. I can also export this to CSV. So I can go both directions with it. And I find especially a lot of stakeholders might like to work with lists of things in yep. Excel because they might want to create their own charts off to the side um, or they might want to email it Super around helpful. or ha somehow socialize this. Um, that's that's proven to be really useful there. So, um, so how might I, I measure my team's progress through a sprint? Like that's one thing I've been you know really working to um, make sure we've, we're updating our time and our effort and all of that. There's got to be some visuals. Yeah, right, right. There's a you know the burn downs obviously the best way, right? It, but you in order to have mm -hmm. the burn downs working, you have to have people in the sprint assigned to the team, and those people mm -hmm. have to have hours committed to them in that sprint configuration. So, um, mm -hmm. it, and then you have to figure out uh, the tasks all have to have hours of remaining work for Scrum. Now, for the Agile template, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. Uh, but I definitely think we need to come back and have another video explaining what hours remaining works because I don't think a lot mm -hmm. of people understand that fully. They think it's the estimate, mm -hmm. but it's not, right? And that's how you get your burn mm -hmm. down data. Another report mm -hmm. that I really like that we have to come back to is the cumulative flow diagram. That in itself can mm -hmm. be a pretty rich topic. Um, the cumulative flow just says how much work is coming in. Am I getting through each stage of my, my um, release? And uh, on my Kanban board, my Kanban, Kanban uh, board, <laughs> still don't have it right. Um, mm -hmm. But as each of those stages, if you go back to that, that board, it, the, the cumulative flow diagram is awesome here because it tells you how many work items are going through that stage. So it's actually a fantastic view uh, for that. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll show it on another mm -hmm. video, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I found that that cumulative flow, when I've used it by hand on other projects, um, you know, actually calculated it, um, it can identify where I've got some um, blockers in my pipeline, like if yeah. I'm adding more items faster right, than right. I'm solving them, um, or, you know, they're waiting to be resolved by QA um, yeah. slower than they're being developed. It can kind of help me identify where where I've got bottlenecks. Some bottlenecks. Bottlenecks for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, obviously, at a start of a project, you're going to have a huge amount of new items. Mm -hmm. But then it's it's what's the flow of working over time, you know, accumulating, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Mm -hmm. um, anything else yeah, we want to talk like about? The data gets more and more accurate yeah. as I go. Every sprint, we're going to kind of make those the statistics better. So, right. yep. it's cool. 
Anything else we want to talk about on this, or are we good for now? Um, I think we're good. I think we wrap it up and tease yeah. our pipelines. <laughs> yeah, okay. that is going to be fun. <laughs> Let's build some code. Uh -huh. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions or topics you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.